Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now when we left off we had successfully taken Ikima from the likes of the Kurgid Khanate and it seems like we are having basically free reign of their territory at the moment because I just passed by Tolga and it seems like there's no one there. Now the only people that are actually out and about and that are attempting to kind of run interference and things are the step bandits so I might have to take out their step bandit lair reasonably soon but at the moment I'm kind of just going to concentrate on taking the Kurgit Khanate's fiefs because what we can do is maybe we can force them into giving us a peace agreement and then we will have taken much much more territory from them and then we can move on to maybe another faction or maybe another faction will decide to declare war against us and obviously at that point we'll you know just see what happens but anyway a Sugan castle once again hello we are back here and this is actually not even a bad siege for us because there is 56 yeah, 56 units here. So we are pretty good, you know? We are pretty good. And I think we should be absolutely fine in dealing with the enemies here. I hope, at the very least. Because obviously the Swadians and Saranids and... I don't even know what... what the, Asugan Castle has just been taken by so many people that I can't even remember the history of it anymore. But yeah, there's a lot of people here. So we need to be a little bit careful about... Can you... Can you not hit? Are you are you serious, Scout? Come on now. That was one out of three. That was not very good. There we go. You're getting your ratio a little bit better. Come on now. Okay, come on. Let, oh, that guy with the shield moved in front. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, wow. He, he was really bad there. Okay, well, never mind. Okay, so how, this is the thing. These are mostly archers, right? So I guess I should just tell my cavalry just to charge straight on in here. I really don't see a necessity to hold them back any further. I mean, just look at these guys. They're, they're pretty, they're, they're going to be pretty easy to take out. Obviously not me. I'm not going to go in there and, you know, have a very easy time of things. But yes, for the most part, oh my, am I being shot from somewhere? Where am I being shot from? Oh, over there. Wow. You're, you're very sneaky. That, that person is, isn't he? Okay. Well, anyway, let's just take these guys on and yeah, take them down, take them down. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's what we like to see. Very nice. Okay, so obviously these guys are obviously going to fall before us pretty easily. We just need to be a little bit careful about being shot in the back because I think behind us up there is actually an archery nest. But obviously I do need to be a little bit careful about the front as well because they're going to come from everywhere. But it seems like we are getting them down. And oh yeah, I did make a brief stopover at Nara. And I did get some regular archers and three master archers because I don't have any more master archers. So I'm going to have to level up a bunch of regular ones and hopefully they're going to graduate to the next level reasonably soon because obviously we don't want to be left without a superior archer force, do we? Even though technically, you know, the master archers are not exactly the greatest, but personally I'd rather have master archers than any of the lower tier ones, so... Just trying to make sure that we have the best situation possible in any particular respect. Because if we come across, you know, something with a huge amount of, I don't know, a huge amount of two-handed infantry, which is obviously the Vagiers, they they are, I think, primarily using two-handed. And then they don't, I believe, I don't think they use shields that often. If they do, and then I'm mistaken, and... Well, obviously that's a bit of a <laughs> that's a bit of a shame, but I I think I remember that the the Vagiers are using two handed mostly, but I could be wrong about that. I don't know. It seems like mostly the Serenids also use two handed, so it could just be that most of the high level infantry of most of the factions do tend to lean towards using a two handed more often than not. For example, Nord Huskals. You know, Nord Huskals. I think they also have two-handed but for the most part they prefer to use shields i could be wrong about that to be honest because the huskars are probably the most tough you know they, they they're not going to die very easily so they could be the ones that don't use two-handed but anyway i think we are done here and yes there we are very nice okay so we have oh we could actually take this guy prisoner i'm not going to because i'd like him to offer himself to us, quote-unquote, <laughs> and we're going to see how that goes. But anyway, 
It seems like, ah, uh, I'm just going to take the Swadians, I guess. I'm going to stay with my rule of taking units that are only neutral or have been conquered or Saranids, basically. So that's what we're going to go for. I'd love to take this Vagia veteran. As you can see, he's using a two-handed axe right there, so it's a bit weird. And I'm just going to take this watchman, I guess. Oh, yeah, and I also found a ransom broker in, uh, where was it now? In, in Ikuma? I think, yeah, in Ikuma itself, and I sold all of my prisoners for about, I think it was 1,500 or something like that, I, I don't know, it didn't really give me a number, it just, I just, I'm, I'm just sort of estimating here, but obviously we don't really need the, you know, we don't really need the cash, it's not really necessary, so, here we go, what am I going to be doing, am I going to be giving this to Lord Play, am I going to be giving it to Lord Akadan, well obviously Lord Akadan already has his hands full kind of defending Maliok Castle, I actually don't know which castle Lord Play has. I think he has Distar Castle, which is very close by to us. So it might make sense to give him that, because it's not a very large distance between the two castles. So I think we're probably going to do... It could be Behesh Tur that has Distar Castle, though. So, oh well, never mind. I'm just, I'm just going to do it. Play can have it, because uh, he is actually the lowest in relation with us right now. So that's obviously a bit of a problem, but... Oh, well, never mind. I think it should be pretty good to have some Swadian units garrisoned there. Now, I'm going to just wait here for a little bit and see if they decide to attack. Now, obviously, ah, uh, yeah, there you go. Obviously, Ikuma is still weak. So we do have to be a little bit careful about that. Now, I'm going to be heading in here, taking this guy out on the way, because I don't want that village to be raided for free. And then what we're going to do is we are going to hopefully be able to get to Ikimur before it is besieged. And then we will be in a really, really good position. Okay, so we have 38 archers. I think it's about time that we actually take advantage of them on an actual field battle, because it's been a huge amount of time since we've actually used any kind of tactics on a field battle, because, you know, we have superior cavalry forces, and using superior cavalry is usually the most efficient way to play the game. But obviously, efficiency, we've never been about efficiency, have we? So we're going to just have a little bit of fun with our archers on the, wow, on the Im amazing hill top advantage right here. I mean, just look at that. That's really, really crazy right there. I like it a lot. And we're also going to be getting a huge amount of infantry units coming across there as well. And they're just going to get absolutely murdered, hopefully. Yes, I added the hopefully in there because the archers don't actually seem to be doing a very good job at the moment. Oh, there you go. There they go. A little bit more kills going on there. Oh, it seems like they're mostly crossbowmen. Well, this is this is very bad for them because obviously we have a counter to that as well. So it seems like we had a counter to their cavalry slash infantry forces, and we also have a counter to their crossbowmen in the form of our cavalry themselves. So, oh well, yeah, it seems like this guy had probably the worst day he's ever had because I, I don't think I've ever seen him before. So this is the first time we are meeting him, and he's just like, oh, hello there, welcome. Please, won't you sit down? And then we're just like, no, we're going to slaughter you. Yeah, apparently that's that's what Barney's all about, apparently, at the moment. He's just slaughtering everyone. Oh, unfortunately, he did manage to escape. I was hopeful that I'd be able to let him go so that I'd maybe gain back a little bit of relation with him. And maybe we can try and get him over to our side at some point. Anyway, we're going to go over to Ikuma and see if there is any kind of defensive situation required. Otherwise, Asugan Castle might serve as a pretty good distraction. Wow, there's really not very... Yeah, look, it is Lord Play. Lord Play does have Distar Castle. That's fantastic. Okay, so he's running after that guy. You probably want to be a little bit careful, Lord Play. I'm running over here, so just be careful. Don't get yourself killed or anything. Thank you very much. All right, so what's going on here? Okay, so Grainwad. Okay, so if you just take a look at these people's units here, they have nothing. And... I'm saying they have nothing in a very, very loose way because, I mean, they have a lot of units, but if you take a look at their units, what do they have? They have nothing. I mean, he has, what is it, 11 man-at-arms, which is perfectly fine. I might be getting a little bit overconfident here as well, by the way, so that might spell our doom at some point in the future. But anyway, let's just level up more of our Swadian knights there, and I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to swap the archers 
back down here because we are just going to go straight at them with some superior cavalry forces because we are outnumbered rather considerably here. I mean, if you just take a look, 171, 75, and 50. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty... Ins oh, wait a minute. I missed one. Kramuk Noyan is also waiting here. Oh, all right. Okay, I, I'm fine to do that. Let's do it. Let's go. This is going to be one of the biggest battles we've ever had. And it is 393. All right, let's do this. Okay, so we have 42 and they have 84. So technically, <laughs> we have exactly half. Yeah, we have exactly half. And I don't really want any archers, personally. I don't want any archers at all. I personally feel like archers are a very, very big deficiency in our army composition at the moment, but they are a necessary evil for sieges. So obviously they are the reason why we're going to, you know, actually win sieges at the moment. So I'm a little bit worried about these cavalry, to be honest, because they're going to be able to get around our forces right here. Sorry for the camera work, by the way. It's absolutely awful. I'm I'm pretty bad when it comes to using my my camera on a, on, on you know, on a horse. And, uh, yeah, it may end up going, like, oh, all over the place. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that. But, yeah, sometimes that's just how it is when I'm swinging away at some unit that has a bit of a weird angle or something like that. Because I don't want to kill his horse. I'd like to actually kill him. So, that's my, that's my main goal, obviously, most of the time. All right. So, how is it going so far? It actually seems to be going reasonably well, but we have to take into account that Kurgids are extremely irritating when, you know, having to be dealt with when on a horse, because they're just going to run around all the time, and, you know, I, all my complaints you've already heard, because obviously the horse archers are, oh, they, oh, they're, just, they're just absolutely awful. Ah, very, very awful. Anyway, we're going to just tell our infantry to charge in now as well. I think that's Rolf over there. That looks like Rolf to me. Yeah, that's Rolf. He can hopefully get a couple of kills. And hopefully our Mamluks will not get killed by Rodok trained spearmen. Are you serious now? Come on. Come on, Mamluks. Are you serious? You're being killed by the worst units ever. But I suppose they, you know, it is a spear. And spears are generally a direct counter to cavalry. So I'm just going to ask all my cavalry to come back here. And then I'm going to just tell them to charge in straight away again. So that they can stay in a bit of a... A eh, bit of a decent formation. You know, we don't want them to just be running around aimlessly, doing whatever it is they want to do by themselves. That's the thing. That is the key. We do not want them doing random stuff by themselves. They can do random stuff with someone else by their side, because then that improves their chances of being a little bit more effective. But otherwise, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we actually have this in the bag. It's actually... No, it's not going as well as I actually thought before I said that. So... <laughs> we might not have it in the bag just yet. Because, as you can see here, the enemy is... Well, basically all over the place. They are all over the place. They're trying to separate our cavalry units. I'm going to try and hopefully prevent that from happening. Because you really don't want your cavalry just running around wherever because they're going to get singled out, you know? They're going to get singled out by a bunch of spearmen or something along those lines and then it's going to end up being an absolute bloodbath for your cavalry and I don't really want that, so I'm going to try and micromanagement... Management? Micromanagement them. Yes, no, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to try and micromanage them a little bit and, you know, see if we can get a, a better result than them just running off. Oh, yeah, as you can see, look at that. They're actually getting killed by Rodok Train Spearmen. Are you serious? Well, I suppose the Rodok Train Spearmen are not the worst unit, so I don't really mind if they do get, you know, taken out by that. But just please don't get killed by militia or something like that. I think that's, uh, that's a bit much, isn't it? It's a bit much for Mamluks or indeed Swadian Knights to be killed by, oh wow, really? Got killed by a regular horse archer as well? Okay, well, anyway, to get killed by, you know, regular militia or something like that, because they have pretty decent armor, you know? They have decent armor, so, yeah, let's come on, let's, let's take out this guy if I can. Oh, he's being very annoying, isn't he? Look at that, he's just poking my horse in the face. I really don't like that. Thank you very much. You can just go away. Wow, I'm actually really surprised. Rolf is still alive. Everyone, Rolf is still alive. Newsflash, Rolf is alive. I can't believe it. That is crazy. If he if he actually lives throughout the entirety of this battle, I will give him 
the most prestigious award, and that is the Unlimited Cupcakes Award. In other words, he will get a, a cupcake every single time we do a battle, because he's just amazing then, in that case. If he stays alive, then he's going to get that. And that means he can have a cupcake whenever he wants, and he gets a cupcake every single time we win a battle. Not when we lose. <laughs> Not when we lose, because I don't have any cupcakes then. All the enemies have stolen the cupcakes, so yeah, we need to be a little bit careful about that. But anyway, I am. Pr I think we're pretty good. Yeah, I think we are pretty good. We have won the first round of this rather grueling battle. And it seems like Rolf has survived. And I am absolutely gobsmacked. I really am. I never would have imagined that Rolf would survive an entire battle. I mean, really? I mean, wow. I, I don't even know how he was able to do that. I mean, I, ha I did tell him to charge. I did tell him to charge in, and yet he's still alive. I can't believe it. There's Ferentis as well. Ferentis has also survived. That's crazy. That is really, really crazy. Oh, well, there you go. 182. They still have 212 for us to fight. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so we have a much more balanced army this time because most of our cavalry has been eliminated. So, hmm. I'm going to take a little bit of a more, so shall we say, reserved stance here. And we're going to try and just allow their cavalry to charge into us. Then we're going to tell our cavalry to retaliate while our archers pepper them a little bit. And then we will... Probably just... I think we'll just stay here, actually. I think staying here is a pretty reasonable plan. I don't think that that's really going to do too much. There we go. Uh, we can take out that... Oh, I was actually hopeful that I'd be able to take out that horse, but apparently not. Now, these guys do have more Rodok units this time, I think. And there are some spearmen, so we need to be a little bit careful. Ow! Ow, ow, ow! Okay, yeah. Need to be more careful. And that's exactly the reason why the Mamluks were killed, because, as you could see, the absolutely insane damage that the spearmen are able to do to you is really impressive. So, yeah, need to be a little bit more careful about that. But, as it stands, I think I can just, yeah, I think I can just go in here. Oh, oh my, maybe not, maybe not. A Swadian, really? A Swadian is able to do some damage there as well? Huh, <sighs> it seems spears... Are definitely the name of the game at the moment, especially, you know, considering they are direct counters to cavalry. And we do have a cavalry army, so I guess that makes sense. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my units, and my cavalry more specifically, to sort of group up a little bit here. And then we're going to tell them to charge in again, because they are very, very close. The enemies, that is. And we will charge in against them and do so much more damage. There we go. So much more. Look at that. I mean, that's just really, really cool to deal some significant, devastating damage to them. Now, if this was a mod, and I think there's actually a mod that does that. I seem to remember. Is it Light and Darkness that does that? I think there are a number of mods that actually have this system. But anyway, when you kill the enemy in quick succession, or when you kill a bunch of the enemy's units, they lose morale. And when they lose enough morale, or enough units in this case, they decide to retreat from the battle. And now, in my opinion, that's a really, really cool system because that makes sense. You know, that, that, doesn't that make sense to you? That makes sense to me because, obviously, if the enemy is seeing that they're losing too many forces, then it would make sense for them to think, you know, to actually think with their minds and brains and things like that and be like, oh... We're losing a bunch of units. It might be a good idea for us to retreat and rethink our strategy. But obviously, considering this is native, you know, they don't do that or anything like that. So, yeah. But that's fine with me. That's actually fine with me because it means we can just eradicate and exterminate all of our opponents. And that then, you know, that then turns into a pretty nice domination of the opponent. So I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. Anyway, as we can see here, the last two remaining forces do seem to be routing. Yeah, they do actually seem to be routing. Two of them escaped. So that's... I, I wouldn't say that's a very good ratio, would you? I mean, we killed, what, 133 and two of them escaped? So yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. They are not doing very well. 
and this is going to be even worse for them because I'm literally just going to charge in our cavalry here at full speed, absolute full speed, and they are not going to know what hit them. Obviously, if they have some lancers, then this might be quite painful, but I think they don't. Nope, it seems like they don't. They just have Kurgit spearmen, well, not Kurgit spearmen, but they do have you know, skirmishers and, you know, regular Kurgit units, and they are sometimes outfitted with spears of sorts. So obviously they can do some pretty significant damage to you in that situation. But otherwise, look at this. They only have Swadian recruits left, and farmers, and militia, and things like that. And, well, suffice it to say, we have won the day. Yes, we have. We have very, very easily won the day. Okay, so, can I, can I, can I please kill that horse? Thank you very much. There we go. Well, I don't even need to do anything right now. This is this is a foregone conclusion, but I think our strategy of keeping our cavalry towards the, you know, towards the sort of closeness of our spawn zone, that is probably partially the reason why we were able to kind of fight them off because I am still, I'm going to reiterate this, I am still playing on very very high damage modifiers just normal normal mod normal modifiers because obviously normal is 100% damage to friends and 100% damage to myself i mean i wouldn't get taken out so easily right if i had damage on a lower you know a lower st standpoint and i might actually be lowering it at some point if we are going to be doing like a big siege or something like that and i'll i might lower it to myself but i don't think i'll lower it to my units at any point because well you know, I should be able to beat them just straight up, you know, but for me, you know, I, I kind of like to stay alive a little bit longer because then it's more fun, but obviously then it does add that little bit of extra, little bit of extra difficulty, I guess, because then we're going to get automatically booted out from the siege or battle or whatever it is because we don't have diplomacy, of course. We don't have the battle continuation or anything like that. So, yeah, uh, you know, there's a number of things that you can customize, and that's what I was talking about in the previous episode as well, you know but I'm not going to prattle on about that again. So anyway, there you go. We did a pretty decent job of defending Ikima. We have sent the Kurgits running with their tails between their legs, and we also took Asugan Castle. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.